Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with another fan TV, man. Back at you on this video. Had the content video, go smash that like button on the content of this channel. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, so what we're gonna do today, Ravens versus Steelers, game preview, okay? Uh, we're gonna talk about the injury report. We'll talk about the Steelers offense and defense where they rank in the NFL right now. Currently, we'll talk about some keys to the game and we're gonna talk about some X factors for this game. Uh, to see the Ravens get a W, of course. That's why we're here, right? We want to see the Ravens win. Uh, and then I'm going to make a prediction at the end of uh, what I think how the game is going to go. All right. So let's start off with the Steelers injury report. Who's going to be out there for the Steelers? This is very, very important stuff to know, right? So Kenny Pickett and Najee Harris have no injury designation. All right. So these guys are obviously two of the top players on the offense. You know, Kenny Pickett is their quarterback. And Najee Harris was a first-round pick running back. Kenny Pickett was a first-round pick at quarterback. So these guys are um, essential to what they want to do on offense, right? Even though the Steelers' offense is struggling, it's going to be it's important that they have their two starters out there, right? That's that's important to see. All right. Now Alex Highsmith, outside linebacker, disruptive outside linebacker, really really good. He's questionable. Now I'm not sure if he got injured during the week of practice or what happened because online, according to the Steelers. He didn't have anything on Wednesday. Then Thursday, he didn't practice. Then Friday, he was limited participant. So I don't know exactly when, maybe what happened between, you know, the beginning of the week and the end of the week. So if the Ravens can go into this game and not face Alex Highsmith, that's a big win for them. But if he is going to play, the Ravens obviously have to go against T.J. Watt on one side, Alex Highsmith on the other side. And this Steelers defense gets after the quarterback, and we know that already. All right. Um, now, guys that are out, Pat Fryer move. DeMarvin Leal, uh, James Daniel, James Daniels, excuse me, uh, and their left tackle, Dan Moore Jr., okay? All guys that are out. And this is big. This is three offensive starters out. Pat Firemuth is a safety blanket over the middle of the field. The guy that can't pick it like to throw the ball to, he's out. Now you got two, now the Steelers are going to be down two starting offensive linemen in their left tackle and a guard. So the Ravens didn't take advantage of that, all right? Now, and then the guy starting in place of Dan Moore at left tackle is Broderick Jones. He's a rookie that the Steelers drafted this year. So that can play in the that can play in the Ravens' advantage as well. So these are this is an area right there, boom, right off the bat, we're seeing the Ravens can attack them right here. All right. Now let's go to the Steelers' last three games, see how their their momentum is coming into this game. All right. They're two and one. They won 26-22 versus the Browns Monday night. That was when, you know, Nick Chubb had that very, very horrific injury. 23-18 um, versus the Raiders. I believe that was like Sunday night football and kind of a, uh, you know, a sloppy game from them as well. And then 30-6 loss versus the Texans. Now, this Texans team is a very, very uh, feisty, aggressive team. But, you know, 30-6 for the Steelers is still a very, very disappointing result. And the result that had to be unexpected for their fans you know what i mean i couldn't imagine that they were going to that texas game even though it was on the road expecting they expecting to have you know a 30 point loss uh sorry 24 point loss giving up 30 points to the texas now cj stroud has been a really really good uh rookie quarterback but still very very surprising performance all right so let's talk about the steelers defense let's talk about their offense let's talk about where they rank at in the league all right now pass defense for the steelers they are at they are averaging, giving up 254 yards a game for 26 in the NFL. Um, but opponents are only completing around 59% of their passes, which is tied for fifth in the NFL. And the Steelers are getting 3.3 sacks a game, which is seventh in the NFL. So um, it's interesting to give up that many uh, yards, but not a high completion percentage. You know, usually those things go hand in hand. So they're giving up maybe some big plays, but not giving up a lot of uh, just, you know, back-to-back -back completions, okay? Um, Steelers... Always going to get after the quarterback. Always, right? So, T.J. Watt's going to be out there. He's going to be over the top of the right tackle. Um, we'll see if Alex Highsmith plays. Um, Alex Highsmith, excuse me, see if he plays. Um, and he's going to be over the top of the left tackle. But if, they, if they're out there, uh, the Steelers have two dynamic edge rushers coming after Lamar Jackson, all right? Uh, so, with that being said, we know that the Ravens um, are getting some guys back on the offensive line, all right? Uh, Ronnie Stanley should be back. He's been a, pretty much a full participant this week in practice, so that's great to see. Uh, so if he can be back at left tackle, that means a guy like um, Patrick McCarry slides over the right tackle because it looks like Morgan Moses is going to be out. All right. Now, Morgan Moses is a guy that has played uh, 134 consecutive NFL games at offensive line. 
that's an amazing stat, right? A guy, a position where, you know, you're literally hitting and grabbing every single play of the game. He's played 134 straight games. Um, so I'm sure he'll try his hardest to be out there, but he's listed as doubtful. So I think his streak, of the, I think that streak's going to come to an end for Morgan Moses. I really do. All right. But Patrick McCarry, this is why he's here. This is why he's that swing tackle, swing offensive lineman, right? To give the Ravens some more uh, stability up, that, up front, right? If, if one of the starters goes out. So the Ravens will have four out of their five starters, presumably, versus the Steelers. All right. So let's talk about where the Steelers are kind of really weak at which is this Russian defense, right? 148 yards a game they're giving up, which is 29th in the NFL. The Ravens are still a top five rushing attack right now in the league. They're finding their rhythm, especially on the ground. You saw Lamar Jackson get loose these last couple of weeks. We saw um, Justice Hill, Gus Edwards, these kind of guys get loose the last couple of weeks. They could have another big game. The Ravens need to take advantage of the fact that the Steelers are giving up a lot of yards this year, right? The Ravens need to take advantage of that. And then we get out to the red zone score, which the Ravens so far have been excellent at. The Ravens are the number one red zone offense in the league. So continue that momentum. All right, now over to the Steelers offense. The Steelers offense is only averaging 15 and a half points per game. That's 20, that's tied for 25th in the league. Um, passing offense, 184 yards a game to 25th. 33 attempts a game for 19th. And they're giving up about three sacks a game, which is about uh, dead middle, about 17th in the NFL. All right. Rushing attack, uh, 79 yards a game, which is 29th in the league. And they're only averaging about 3.5 yards a carry, which is 25th in the NFL. Okay. So to me, when I look at the Steelers, it seems like an offense that probably needs to run the ball a little bit more, help out Kenny Pickett a lot more, get a more play action kind of things going on because. Um, it's too unbalanced for them at the moment. That's just my opinion. Now, a lot of that could be game script, losing games, things like that, but they are 2-2. Two and two. So, um, for me, they need to help out their quarterback a little bit more, right? And he also needs to play better. I've seen some of the games that he's played. He also needs to play better himself. All right. But if I'm the Ravens defense, this is what I'm looking at. Uh, we can get after Kenny Pickett. We can make him uncomfortable. And we can make this offense that's already kind of predictable uh, stay in that kind of lane, right? So if we're going to go to the keys of the game, let's go right into the keys of the game. All right, number one is going to be um, the Ravens' defensive line taking advantage of this Steelers' offensive line. All right, one, they give up three sets of game, right? That's that's about dead middle in the NFL, all right? We just said that, okay? But they're going to be down two starters, all right? You got a rookie left tackle, and then you got another backup coming in, um, filling in at, at, at the guard spot. So the Steelers are going to... According to the stats, they're still going to try to throw the football. So if that's the case, this Ravens D-line needs to get after it. All right, so we're talking about simulated pressures. You're talking about um, your edge rushers. Hell, even Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith mugging up the gaps and sometimes dropping, sometimes coming up right at Kenny Pickett. Okay, so I'm looking for a big game as far as pressure-wise. So a guy like, you know, we talked about Clowney. Hell, even Kyle Van I mean, we got to think about Kyle Van Noy played – Pretty well last week versus the Browns. I mean, the Ravens signed him on like a, what was like a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and he was out there playing in the game on Sunday, and was actually getting some pressure on a DTR uh, versus the Browns. So another week under his belt, I expect him to be even better. So that's that's key number one. Key number two is going to be that this Ravens offense finds a rhythm early. When the offense has been, when they have done that, the games have obviously gone smooth, right? That's 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 an obvious thing to say, right? So. Um, when you think about this year, right? So the first game versus the Texans, the first half was really, really slow. Then he kind of found himself in the second half of the game. Um, versus the Bengals, which is probably their most complete offensive performance this year. They found a, a rhythm really early on in the game and then kind of sustained it and then dropped off at certain points, but good rhythm. All right. The Colts game, first drive was beautiful. Then they lost, uh, pretty much momentum, really second, third quarter. They had to find it again in the fourth. The uh, the last game I just played versus the Browns. First quarter, the first half of the first quarter, I would say, was a little sloppy. Then Brown Stevens with the interception. Then the Ravens offense kind of catches rhythm right there, all right? So um, they need to find a way to get that momentum early in the game and keep it going throughout, right? If they can do that, play solid on the fundamental football, this Steelers offense has shown so far they're not going to be able to keep up that kind of pace, right? They haven't been a, um, a very, very explosive kind of offense so far to start this year, all right? 
Um, now, for me, right, the X factors. Sometimes the X factors are are you know these things that are really uh, discreet and minute or whatever. But sometimes it's just straight up obvious things. And to me, the X factor is Lamar Jackson versus the Steelers, right? Now we already know about Lamar Jackson. Obviously, he's a star quarterback, so how can he just be the X factor? Well, Lamar Jackson has pretty much dominated the AFC North since he's been in this division, since he's been in the NFL, obviously. Now, the one team he has struggled against has been the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, he only has three career games with the Steelers. It seems like he's been injured the last couple of years when the Ravens have played the Steelers. But, three career games with the Steelers. He's one and two. Four touchdowns. Six interceptions. With a 67.4 QB rate. All right. Now, Lamar Jackson, right now, at this point in the year, is completing like almost 74, 75% of his passes. So, he's playing a really, really well right now. He needs to transfer transfer that from these first couple of games into the Steelers game, right? Because when you're a Raven and you're going against the Steelers, this, this is some of the most important games when it comes to stamping your legacy, right? So Lamar Jackson needs to have a game where he shows up and shows out versus the Steelers, right? Uh, the games in the past, I'm not blaming it all on him, things like that. It's a whole collective team effort. But he's the leader of this charge on offense, right? So I'm looking for Lamar Jackson to have a really, really good game. And this year, the Steelers are giving up the yards, right? Whether that's on the ground or through the air. So the Ravens need to take advantage of that. Lamar Jackson needs to take advantage of that. This is the kind of game where if the Ravens do get up early, I, I do want to see that uh, aggression continue throughout the game, all right? Um, you're on the road. You need to put the Steelers team away. Don't give them any kind of confidence and momentum. And um, and really any uh right, any conference on momentum. So and then I, I missed it right here. But the, my third key to the game was for the Ravens defense to stifle a struggling offense. I feel as though this game, Kenny Pickett, the whole Steelers offense is under a lot of pressure to perform. They're already struggling. All right, don't give them any signs of life. Early on in the game, the Ravens defense has been playing really well this season. So early on in the game. Get sacks. If you get a turnover early, great. But continue that level of aggression right from the start. All right. Don't give this to this offense any kind of confidence. Because listen, man, at the end of the day, this is a division game. These division games sometimes really have nothing to do with what the stats say. You know your opponent so well that, you know, whoever can come up with the newest wrangle or, or just find a play here or there is going to win the game. This Ravens defense has been one of the top, probably top five defenses in the NFL so far to start of the year. This Steelers offense has been close to the bottom, if we're being completely honest. So the Ravens defense needs to find a way to stifle them early. And then the X Factor on the other side of the ball, Amar Jackson and this Ravens offense with Odell Beckham coming back, with Rashad Bateman coming back, Safe Flowers is here, Mark Andrews, all the guys, Justice Hill. They need to find that rhythm early and often, and the Ravens can win this football game. And the Ravens could win this game by multiple scores, right? So if I had to predict this game right now, I'm going to go 27-14 Ravens. I don't think the Steelers offense gets it going. I think the Ravens keep it rolling. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be an easy game by any trusted imagination. But I do think the Ravens will win by multiple scores, right? That's just how I'm, that's just how I'm feeling. Most Steelers games don't go that way. Most Steelers Ravens games go down to the, go down to the wire, go down to one possession. But I'm having faith in the way this team is playing right now to show up, show out in Pittsburgh, and, um, you know, stomp out any hope early that the Steelers have. So 27-14, Ravens, that's my prediction. Uh, give me your prediction in the comments, man. So thank you guys for watching. If you stay to this point in the video, man, consider hitting that subscribe button. And I'm going to get out of here, man. It's Gary Roof, which is on the Fan TV. I'm out.